Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance. But the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. 
Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly Psalm 20 as it is printed in the leaflet. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his holy place and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant to you your heart's desire and prosper. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with a victorious strength in his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down. O oh Lord, give victory to the king, and answer us when we call. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. 
But whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, because he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. During these next two summer months, we're going to be immersed in the Old Testament's David saga. In the first book of Samuel, we examine the nature of leadership among God's chosen people. And we began last week when we learned that God's people no longer were content to have judges help them live as the people of God. Instead, they were insistent on a king. They were infatuated with being ruled over like the other nations. The people of God said they wanted a king to rule over the people, a king set apart from the rest of them. And this was new. So this week's Old Testament lesson continues the tale of Israel's leadership transition from having judges to having kings. Today, we remember the story of Israel's first king, Saul, and the call of its second king, David. 
Now, we know a good bit about David in the church, but we don't often talk about Saul. The truth of the matter is that King David's reign will occupy the majority of our summer from the Hebrew scriptures, but Saul is certainly worth remembering today. So today we heard about the end of his reign, but let's look at how he began. Saul was a handsome young man from the tribe of Benjamin. And in fact, scriptures say that in fact there was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. He stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Although Saul was tall and handsome, he was also an ordinary young man from humble beginnings. He was on a journey to retrieve a herd of donkeys for his father when he and a traveling companion heard that Samuel, one of God's prophets, was in the area nearby. And they thought, if a prophet is nearby, perhaps he can tell us where this wandering herd of donkeys is. And so they go and seek his help. Now, just the day before, the Lord had come to his prophet Samuel and had said, tomorrow a young man will come to you. And when he arrives, you are to anoint him to be the ruler over Israel. This young man would become the king that the people were demanding. Moreover, the Lord told Samuel, this young man would deliver the people from the hand of the Philistines. So the next day, Samuel meets Saul, and he knows right away that he is the one. He wastes no time in anointing him as king, and he explains to Saul that he will receive signs to affirm his kingly calling. God often will affirm calls. So that was a good thing for uh, Saul to know. So the signs came, and Saul reigned as king for 42 years. Now Saul was a warrior king, and he conducted successful military campaigns against the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, and the kings of Zobah, the Philistines, and the Amalekites. Now the Amalekites were Saul's undoing. That's where he lost his kingship. What happened was uh, Saul was told by Samuel, still God's prophet, that he was to kill all of the Amalekites and their animals. But after the battle, Saul not only doesn't kill the king, but he saves the best animals for himself. So Roger uh, Nam, an author, writes that although Saul began as a good and faithful king, in the end he was pre uh, preoccupied with maintaining his own kingship his own wealth and power. So he disobeys God's prophet. And when Samuel learns that Saul has been disobedient, he grieves. He grieves for the loss of Saul as king. And we hear about that in our Old Testament lesson today. And God tells Samuel that he has now rejected Saul and his kingship. Samuel then went and killed the Amalekite king himself, and he left Saul behind. And that's where we come in today. Samuel is still grieving over the loss of Saul, and God says, how long will you grieve for Saul? So it, apparently he really, really was grieving. But God's people needed a new king, and so God instructs Samuel to go to Bethlehem where he will meet Jesse. And God tells him, don't look at his sons as mortals would see them, but look at each of his sons to know their hearts, and that is how you will know who to anoint. By examining the hearts of these young men, these sons of Jesse, Samuel would be able to discern God's new chosen king. Well, by ancient standards, everything about David's calling and becoming king is a little topsy-turvy because David is the youngest. Usually it is the oldest son who receives anointing. And yet as Samuel looks into heart after heart of son after son, all he can see is that so far, the future king is not among the gathered. And he says, are all your sons here? David is so far off the radar of his father that he's not even present at the gathering. He's off with the sheep. So the youngest is sent for. And when David arrives, Samuel knows by looking in his heart that he is the one. Now, in the Old Testament, as the New, God's choices are always surprising. His prophets, his kings, even his son, are unlikely and unknown and undeniably compelling. The Old Testament will share these king stories with us all summer, and that gives us a chance to think about 
what it means to follow a king and to really think about who our king is, what our obedience and fealty to this king might look like, and what unlikely calls God is still giving out to, the, to us and to those around us. So we will also be looking at the reign of David with an eye toward our own story and God's own king, his son Jesus. Now in the Old Testament lesson, God is active and surprising and totally behind the Israelite king. And thus the Davidic line begins. God accepts David's kingship, which will transcend earthly rule to the point where God will again grieve, comfort, promise, surprise, and anoint in the form of Jesus, the new Messiah. God's choices, as always, are infinitely better than anything or anyone that we might choose or imagine. And in spite of our own feelings of unlikely suitability, God calls each one of us as well. He calls us into service. He calls us into leadership. He calls us into mission and servanthood. All we need to do is look into our hearts and the hearts of those around us and follow and obey. Amen. If you will please stand. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. All things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. 
We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We bring before God our prayerful intentions for St. John's Church, the Red Door, and all of our ministries, for all those who worship here and online, and in anticipation of those who will visit and become part of this vibrant faith community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before God our commitment to work towards an end of discrimination against any of God's beloved and our efforts to feed our hungry brothers and sisters in our community. We ask that God will bless our efforts to usher in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before God the healing needs of those who are sick and in any need of any prayer, especially Francisco, Gavin, Lori, Tiernan, Sylvia, Jen, Jerry, Patricia, Marty, Aaron, Zeph, Joe, Ron, Jackie, Jan, Nancy, John, Nora, Hopeton, Kareem, Gail, Edwina, Phil, Mercia, Shiloh, Sharice, Kathleen, Kalanji, Tanya. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call to mind our reasons to be thankful as we remember our abundance and the life-giving way of gratitude. We offer thanks for all those celebrating birthdays this week. Annette, Christopher, Jackie, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Malo, Isabel, George, Lionel, Patricia, Ruth, Jill, Anne, Jane, and Susie. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That all may have a place in God's kingdom. We offer all these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our only strength and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. We have a few announcements. I want to thank Sean and Brendlin for singing today. It was fun to have you all. It reminds us of how church used to be, so it's nice to be uh, adding back the things that we associate with how we worship in this church. A uh, reminder that the, the hymnals are in the pew rack in front of you for your use and uh, enjoyment. <laughs> so please uh, join in the processional and recessional hymns today. I want to let you know how the yard sale went. That's our big news today, and it was extremely successful on a lot of levels. Um, really, there were three goals. One was we had so much stuff that we needed to get rid of, and we got rid of a lot of stuff, so 
Huzzah. Um, the second thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to uh, become known in the community, invite friends and neighbors from all over to come and visit us, to learn about the Red Door, to see where the church is located, and to start to establish um, some possible new relationships with folks. And that happened as well. Uh, we had hundreds of people come through. I don't, do you have an estimate? About a bazillion, I, I'm thinking of a bazillion. So about a bazillion people came through and they all had lots of really lovely things to say about this church, about all of you, and about our merchandise. Um, but the, the big news is that we raised um, over 40, about $4,200 in the sale. Um, and that number is still sort of, you know, being tallied. There's a few... Uh, checks that are still coming in. Um, and the red door uh, will be open today and the merchandise in the hall is still out for your shopping pleasure today. So enjoy some coffee and cake in the churchyard and then head over there and see our bargains because everything's half price in the parish hall. <laughs> and there's some really good stuff left. Um, but um, it was an amazing event. My husband and daughter were here and my husband Chip is a priest and he said that he hasn't seen a church with so much energy and enthusiasm in a long, long time. And I think that's true. This is an amazing church. You're all friendly and welcoming to people and you have some good stuff in your attics and basements because we sold some great stuff yesterday. So thank you to everybody. Um, I mean, literally, I think everybody was involved. I think I saw every single one of you yesterday and um, uh, Jackie literally lived here for, for like the last 12, 13 years. So, <laughs> but definitely for the last month or two. So thanks to Jackie especially. And of course, uh, Libby and uh, Valerie were here all week as well. And actually, I think all of you were. So I'm not going to keep naming names, but thank you to every person. Uh, Barbara and, and all the Mertens and Nelly brought things. So thank you, Glenn. Uh, it was wonderful. The bake sale, ladies, by the way, the bake sale raised about $300, not quite $300. I've never known a church raise that much money with baked goods. So that is an amazing event, too. Um, the other announcements are just that we have a coffee hour sign-up sheet in the back. Coffee hour is held when it is sunny or not raining in the churchyard this summer. And we just need folks to come and, uh, you know, bring some cookies. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. It's easy peasy, and we hope that you'll do that. Then finally, the flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for everyone who helped with the yard sale this week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciles, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, 
Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. are the gifts of God for you, God's people. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Is
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May all the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit reside with you and be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.